Welcome to the fifth presentation in our series on action learning. This presentation is about typical results from action learning. I'm Carter McNamara of Authenticity Consulting. We're providing this series to make action learning more available and more accessible to everyone. This presentation is one in a series, if you've been following along with us. They are best viewed in order, so please be sure to visit the website. It's listed on the bottom of that slide. You'll get more information on the complete series as well as more information about our company. And for now, let's get started. If you've been following along with us in this series, then you have a fairly good understanding of the action learning process, how it occurs in programs and different perspectives on the process. You also understand that regardless of how the process is customized, it always has the same basic elements. So in this presentation, we'll review the types of results or outcomes that people use action learning for. First, there are certain standard outcomes that you'll always get, no matter how you customize around those elements. And next, there are certain types of outcomes that you get, depending on the particular design of the program. It always helps to look at the type of outcomes that programs aim for when they're designed primarily for accomplishing individual development, and we'll talk about that. We'll end this presentation by reviewing various types of outcomes that organizations often use action learning to accomplish as well. An outcome is a change, or it's a benefit that's realized by a participant or organization from using the process. There are two types of outcomes from action learning. There are standard outcomes that you always get, regardless of how you customize it, and there's program-dependent outcomes that depend on the purpose and the design of the process. We'll look at those in the next slide. So here's a list of the outcomes that members get almost regardless of how they customize it. Take a few seconds and glance at the list. Many people would assert that these are foundational skills in leadership as well. That is, to lead oneself, others, groups, or organizations. A person should have at least the skills listed above. Let's comment on a few. Accountability. This makes sure that people do what they say they're going to do. It's very important in getting things done. As people become more busy, it can be more difficult to get them to be accountable. And authenticity. A local author, Bob Terry, he claims that authenticity self-corrects. That is, if people show up honestly in a program or an effort, then you can build on that honesty to get full ownership and participation in life and work. And then there's emotional intelligence. This is an increasingly important skill to be able to recognize one's emotions and the emotions of others to avoid always acting on them and also to better manage them and reflecting. This is a critical skill in action learning. It's the ability to think about your own experience and learn from it. It's a key skill in the skill of continuous learning that we've talked about in earlier presentations. Reframing. That's the ability to see a situation differently. It's useful because when people get stuck on an issue, it's very often because of their misperceptions or misunderstandings. Reframing can help to move things forward. And then systems thinking. This is the ability to examine and truly understand systems, such as human beings and groups, and to perceive the recurring patterns and themes in them. This is useful especially when discerning the differences between symptoms and causes of those symptoms. There are various levels of program-dependent outcomes. Individual outcomes can be program-dependent outcomes too if they are emphasized even more in a program. For example, if a program is to solve an organizational problem, then it might also emphasize skills in individual problem solving. Group or team outcomes might include, for example, team problem solving and decision making, along with skills in presenting and facilitating. Process outcomes are usually those that span several departments, such as product development and quality improvement. Organizational outcomes might include solving a complex problem, changing the culture of the organization, or cultivating a learning organization. Collaborative outcomes might include developing capabilities for mutual visioning and networking amongst several different organizations. Or, for example, a company might also gather several collaborators or vendors together to optimize the value chain for the company. By the way, some individual outcomes, like the ones in the previous slide, can be program dependent if they are emphasized even more in a program. For example, if the primary purpose of a program is to teach skills and systems thinking, then the program might include various trainings on systems theory and systems thinking and systems tools for members to especially build those skills. 
Program-dependent individual outcomes can also include any professional development outcomes, such as career development or supervisory development, managerial development, and then even just leadership development. Now let's look at the more common applications of action learning. An application is the type of program that produces certain types of outcomes. Let's look at supervisory development. Supervisors are people who are responsible for the progress and productivity of people who report to them. A common misunderstanding is to think that supervisors are only entry level. Actually, CEOs supervise CFOs and COOs, so supervision is at many levels. The best supervisors employ the very coaching skills that are used in action learning, such as listening, questioning, and reflecting, and these are key to good delegation skills. Action learning is ideal for supervisory development, especially if combined with courses in staffing, delegating, employee performance management, and so on. Leadership development. Good leaders have to be able to work with people. They must be excellent at problem solving, decision making, critical thinking, at continuous learning. They need the standard outcomes listed on a previous slide, and action learning then is, is ideal for leadership development. Let's look at management development. Good managers must have strong skills in planning, organizing, and coordinating resources, and action learning is very powerful there too, especially when combined with courses, for example, in strategic and business planning, product development, financial management, and then executive development. Good executives need strong knowledge and skills in systems and strategic thinking, visioning, change management, organizational performance management, Action learning, especially when combined with courses in these topics, has proven to be a powerful tool here as well. Transfer of training is really interesting, and it's not something that people often think of, but it's much more common now in action learning. It can be used to ensure that members share support and accountabilities to actually apply the content from trainings. And coaching skills. Coaching is increasingly important in the workplace. The essence of what members do in action learning is coaching. Action learning can be used to very quickly spread core coaching skills and at a low cost. We'll continue to look at individual outcomes, this time outcomes that are, are not so common. And the use of action learning is spreading to applications that typically aren't even mentioned in action learning literature. For example, networking. In action learning, members form close and confidential groups that cultivate what I call deep networking. They do more than exchange business cards. They come to rely on each other. They learn about each other's roles and responsibilities. Cohorts of learners and programs is an excellent application. Educational institutions, for example, are using action learning to create powerful cohorts where they meet regularly to be coached on how they can understand and apply content from courses. And in onboarding programs, companies are using it for new employees, so they quickly form useful relationships in the company and they come to understand even more about other departments and in coaching groups. Coaches are using action learning to further the development of their clients from one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions. For example, after clients finish one-on-one -on -one coaching, they have the option to move into groups to get even more coaching and to learn coaching at the same time. Or even support groups. Who would have thought? Recent movements in therapy and counseling are focusing more on helping people to take more ownership and accountability for their situations and to take actions to move forward and learn at the same time. Last, we'll look at organizational outcomes specific to certain applications. Realize that many individual outcomes are applied in the workplace and are benefits to the organization such that they become organizational outcomes as well. So let's look at organizational problem solving. That's the classic role of action learning, the application for which it was founded. Organizations are facing increasingly complex problems, problems that can't be solved by applying some straightforward model or procedure. Usually, people only perceive the symptoms of the problem. They need to further clarify them to get down to the real root causes. Then, they need to take ongoing actions to solve them and learn at the same time. That's actually a description of what happens in action learning. How about team building? One of the most frequent comments from action learning members is their surprise at how quickly their group became so very cohesive and trusting. When members are very attuned to listening to and, and helping each other, that very quickly builds a strong bond. 
Also, the authenticity that services can very quickly get people to talking about what's really holding the team back. A new movement, learning organizations. Action learning generates deep learning, learning based on accurate perceptions and understanding of processes and events in the workplace. Very good action learning programs capture that learning and they spread it across the company. Coaching cultures is another major application. How better to create a coaching culture than to ensure that everyone is practicing coaching in the workplace? Action learning is very useful for quickly spreading low-cost coaching skills across the organization. It's also helpful in the execution of plans. Very well done strategic and business plans should also have subordinate action plans that specify who is going to do what and by when. Action learning is excellent for ensuring that members do what they say they're going to do or to have good reasons why not. It's excellent for implementing plans and learning at the same time. Collaboration building. Some companies are using action learning to gather stakeholders such as vendors and collaborators to generate ideas and learning about how they can improve the work they do together. And then also creativity and innovation. Action learning involves frequent ongoing questions questions about perceptions, assumptions, and conclusions, and questions about how to get things done better, and questions to help people think out of the box. It's common in action learning that members proclaim, I hadn't thought of that before. We've come to the end of this presentation. We hope that you'll go on to the next one. You might benefit from the following resources to add even more detail to our overviews of action learning. The website Action Learning Central references an extensive amount of free resources, including about the action learning process, each of its key elements, examples of action learning programs, and tools for each aspect of action learning. There's even an action learning glossary with definitions for each of the common terms in action learning. Our company, Authenticity Consulting, also is available to answer your questions or to help you in any other way. Our firm does very successful action learning groups around the world and for a wide variety of outcomes and applications. There's also the free management library at managementhelp.org. You can find resources and tools for almost any activity in the workplace, including for many of the activities in action learning. You can find more about each of these three resources by going to actionlearningcentral.com gratis and select the presentation entitled General Resources for Action Learning. Thank you.